Some time back, uh, Nia's uh, commission or uh, task Agastya with uh, finding gifted children among rural children. So that's that's a program that I've been assisting as Agastya with. So, okay, next. So who's a who's a Fortunately, before I came into the project, uh, Tiago and his colleagues, uh, many of the instructors at Agastya, had trained on and uh, kind of arrived at a list of criteria that you can follow in identifying with the children. I, I don't want to go through all the seven of them, but they are all, this is important for identification purposes, they are considered outstanding for feedback from teachers, parents, fellow, fellow teachers and community. I mean, this brings me back to, during my career, um, you know, we had this performance evaluation in corporates. So, you know, we the managers are very scared about doing performance evaluation for another human being. Right? So I asked my boss, you know, um, you know, I can understand an average person, an average, above average person, a below average person. I have difficulty in telling somebody, you are terrible. And I also have difficulty in accepting somebody who is absolutely brilliant and how, what is the criteria that I, that I use. My boss said, don't, you, don't even worry, you know, don't put uh, weighted scales and so on and so forth. If somebody is truly outstanding, you don't have to find it. The system will tell you. That's exactly what we follow. Because if a child is truly outstanding and gifted, the parents, teachers and community, no, you don't have to go about, you know, with the magnifying glass or something like that. So, and, and there is a level of inquisitiveness, curiosity, questioning and commitment that is appearing to all the people around them too. Analytical video, a whole, whole, whole bunch of things. You know, 11 flags, 11 criteria is not the purpose of this thing. Uh, but in Agastya, we want to do it quite differently. And you know, thanks to young people like uh, my friend Dr. Shiv uh, Kumar and uh, Mr. Ramaswamy, other young people are pretty lucky because they have these huge exhibits in the Agastya lab. So we decided that we will actually use these exhibits as a method of finding who the gifted child is. Oh, thanks. A gifted child is one that has curiosity, right? And that's one essential part. Ask questions and persistent about finding answers. You know, which better place than to go to an Agastya lab, whether it's a mobile lab or a science center or, or the home lab, than curious about. It. If any of you visited visited the labs while the children are there, you know, they're really, 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 you know, running around like you know, kids in a candy shop. Uh, and the candy is called knowledge, of course. Um, they have the ability to be provoked about what they observe, and there are plenty of provocative exhibits. Uh, um, and then they are thrilled by both irregularities and oddities, and we will see some of them. Next. Now here is a provocative exhibit, right? And it's got square wheels, if some of you can see, right? So, you know, um, one of the things uh, in, in early in the Gift of Children program that we did was to ask a child who was nominated by the parents, teachers and so on and so forth. I, I wanted to test how the child does. So I showed this exhibit and said, you know, without without those little curved things, tracks that you see. So I showed this exhibit to this child and said, you know, can this thing run like a bicycle? Said, Uncle, of course, no. I said, okay, here is how I will do it. And we put the track on and I made, made the thing walk. And I said, now can you see? It moves. You know, you can see his expression in <coughs> wide eye. You know, do you think that any other shape can be made uh, for this kind of exhibit? It took some probably 20-30 seconds to coax several answers out of the chat, including yes, a triangular wheel will work, yes, a pentagonal wheel work will work, and so on. And he went all the way up to you know figuring out uh, a circle is really uh, 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 a polygon with infinite sides, all the way. And this was a child in sixth time. Right? There is no question this child is gifted. How did the science develop? You know, why, what were the reasons why people thought initially everything was going on? Sun, and how did they finally change over and now it is confirmed that the earth goes around the sun? And earlier thought the earth's life was only 7,000 years. <coughs> what? They did think it was the millions of years. So I think in the science education, apart from just teaching it like, uh, you know, these are the rules and we accept it, you must say, how did these things come out? Even though, the, why did the neutral laws are not acceptable under certain circumstances? Why was it necessary to go to the theory of relativity? So something about how did the science evolve 
I think the teacher should teach also because otherwise we are just uh, by heart, just memorizing that kind of thing without really questioning how did the science evolve also. And apart from just teaching science, the evolution of science also I think uh, people should. We wanted children to really understand what tsunami means, so we made a tsunami tank. Incidentally, this was made by uh, in house model building team. Could we have the first slide, slide number 11? Ah. This shows uh, how a uh, normal way. That's a village. Where's the location? This is the village. And uh, the normal waves are shown. Can you mute the sound, please? Mute the sound. Yeah. So can you replay it without the sound? Yeah. So we are generating normal waves. So there is a gentle wave on the beach of a small village. Now, could we have the next one? When a tsunami wave comes, a body of water comes, and how it, how it was this? A lot of energy because the floor of the sea itself shifts because of the earthquake. This was demonstrated. Can we have it once again? Yes. Now, uh, children get a very clear understanding of what tsunami is. We also made another model called topography model to show the campus topography in three dimension. This is uh, taken from the top. You know, you've got to visit the discovery center to really understand and appreciate. But this just goes uh, quickly different slides to show the geological uh, uh, features of our campus. It's rich in butter or minerals and this is a good demonstration of what we have, the riches we have in the campus. Uh, I, you know, it's not easy to really tell you the excitement that we have in Discovery Center. You must all visit if you have not and enjoy these models. Thank you very much. <laughs> Many projects on hand which are not yet ready. One of them is the Astronomy Center. I have designed, uh, along with Ram Swami's help, a planetary system which is 35 feet in diameter and uh, it is motorized so that orbital motion and axial motion, everything is controlled and uh, at a relative speed of, with respect to its uh, rotation around the sun. And this whole model is going to be housed in the Astronomy Center which will have a dome-like structure and uh, the star system is projected from the bottom so that you get a complete uh, astronomy education center uh, to explain uh, various features like uh, eclipses, seasons, and other things in the uh, astronomy center. This is coming up by the middle of this year. I've also got the dream of uh, making a maritime center. The tsunami tank is part of the maritime center that we are building where we have uh, a section which shows the efficiency of different hulls of ships when there is water flow to reduce the uh, drag uh, on the hull and uh, how that can be designed is being thought out. So it will be quite an exciting place to visit when you come back.